The following program was originally recorded live on Facebook on November 18, 2018 at 3.30 p.m. It does contain some language that would not be suitable for all listeners. If you'd like to become a part of the conversation, you can find us on Facebook at Break Channel 13 or find us on the web at watershedprod.com. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Doomsday Roundtable. What, what? Here we are. Here we are. Today we're going to talk about some things that could happen. CMEs, EMPs, maybe computer viruses that kill the power. <laughs> things that could have caused um, what happened in Break Channel 13, the podcast. If you've been listening to that, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, we're just going to get this thing started. What we do is always unscripted. It's got kind of a little flow to it, but other than that, we just kind of are who we are. And most of you recognize that anyway. So let's start this off with CMEs. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm Hayden, also known as Jack. I'm Chris. I've done a lot of things, but I'm mostly Miller. Still a lot of things he's not proud of. I'm Patrick. He's a new guy. He's a new guy. I'm Mike, and uh, I do Max. You don't do Max. You do Max? If I'm lying. <laughs> oh. it takes alter ego to a whole different this, level. Yeah, this is a whole other <laughs> round table. Okay, so if we talk normally, we need some uh, feedback. Is there anybody on there that can give us some feedback? Um, Robert just joined. Buddy of mine, I don't know if he's going to say anything or not. Okay, so what I Hi, need... Robert. Hi, Robert. So what I need to know is if we talk normally, a little bit loud, but just nor- kind of normal, instead of yelling, can they hear us okay? What they really mean is me, because I have a tendency to be quiet and mumble. You're a mumbler. I don't really mumble. I'm just quiet. Because, you know, mm-hmm. stop. Yeah, Rebecca's there. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Would you like cookie? <laughs> I can't wait my cookies. Dude. They're not my cookies to give. I apologize. Okay, yeah, Robert's there. Robert, how do we sound? Uh, does it sound all right? Well, he said hi, so that's good. Yeah, it is good. Stop now. Oh, okay. Well, I wanted to know how loud I have to talk. Oh. I think that if we speak in a normal tone, we'll probably be okay. Yeah. And if not, then turn the volume up. Yeah. (laughs) Mikey's watching, so if we need to, we know we can get louder. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with the EMP. 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 Electric magnetic pulse. Electric magnetic pulse. You know what causes them? It's science fiction. Pat, is it science fiction? It's not science fiction. It is science fact, and it has happened several times in the past. Has it actually happened? An EMP? An EMP has happened several times in the past. Every time we have detonated a nuclear device anywhere, there has been an EMP to that particular area. When we detonated over Bikini Bikini Atoll, it took out um, power grids in Hawaii. Wow. Oh, wow. They just didn't understand it at the time. Oh, so, well. And they, didn't, they didn't know what was happening on Hawaii, that, sure. you know, what was going on with Bikini Atoll. But uh, same thing with Russia and other countries who have tested every so, time there is an EMP. So if it goes off on the ground, it's going to knock out the power. If it goes off three, 400 feet in the air, it's going to knock out a much greater area. A larger a large, area. Much larger umbrella. Wow. So really and truly somebody could pull their little boat up and launch one over either coast and take the entire all the power out on that coast. As long as they have line of sight. So because of the curvature of the earth, once you get over a certain curve, then you'd be protected. Or if you're on the backside of a mountain range. Right. But um <laughs> but, but the thing is is that our electrical grid is fluid. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it travels along the electric grid. 
So if you're on the back side of a mountain on that electric grid, your electric grid goes out even though if you had, say, a freestanding automobile might be sheltered. But if you were plugged into the grid, like you're a part of your house, it would get fried. Right. So what you're saying is electric cars are a bad idea. If they're plugged in. <laughs> they're done. <laughs> if you've got it plugged in, they're done. But the thing is, is that with that EMP, it, because that pulse comes out so viciously, it'll knock out computers. And the cars have computers. Almost every car has computers now. Yeah. Right. So, well, I mean, for like the last 20 or so years. Yeah. So it's walking time. Hence the reason why in Break Channel 13, we're always looking for a damn car. Right. And they're always old. Yeah. Super old. Yeah. Ah, oh, good old petroleum. Um, <laughs> well, we'll get on the petroleum in another that's, episode. That's another episode. So we'll okay. get a different episode. <laughs> okay. Okay, so an EMP is completely possible. Absolutely. Um, well, what about the... Okay, so when I said science fiction, you know, I'm talking about the more... Um, you know, it's not a nuclear explosion. Like, it's not a byproduct of a nuclear explosion. Yeah, it is. No, I know. Oh, I got you. on a science fiction... Kind oh. of level, okay. you know, there have been EMPs they've had in movies. And oh, you can like that. you can create an EMP without the nuclear explosion. They've okay. done it inside labs. Yeah. Okay. But the most effective and easiest way to probably assassinate the masses. Yeah. Would be because now if you've got an EMP, you're going to have more than just power going out. You're going to have that, uh, the, the radiation that comes out with that nuclear, from that nuclear explosion. Right. And even if it's up in the sky, it might not be so bad as if it would for those people. But it's not good. It's still going to fall out. Right, it's still going to come rain, travel. raining down on you like little pleasant <laughs> burning particles. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, but that didn't happen in Break Channel 13. We didn't talk about anybody having radiation sickness or anything that's, like that. That's true, yeah. Right. So... So we kind of take that out of the picture, although everybody well, here knows it's completely possible that that could happen. We say that, though, but at the same time, our little little chunk of planet Earth that we're, we're um, exploring on Freight Channel 13, um, once the power goes out and people stop communicating, how do we know that it wasn't a nuclear blast that happened on the opposite side of the country that started to take out things? I mean, aside from radio transmissions and people communicating in that way, that's one of the things that I think makes it terrifying is that without our normal communications, our cell phones, even our regular phones and our computers and everything else, you have no idea what's happening anywhere else. Yeah, and that's bad. You've got some ham radios or some other people who have radios yeah. that were protected because you pretty much have to have something like that in like a Faraday cage. Yeah. Or underground from right. an EMP or a, or a strong enough CME. So let's go to CMEs. Okay, CMEs. Which is gonna happen. Well, uh, you keep saying that. It's gonna happen, man. When it's gonna happen? The worst part about you saying that is you seem excited about it. So, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> happen, man. <laughs> I've been waiting for this my entire life. Come on, CME. Okay, so what is the CME? Turn the power off for mama. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're just like some, uh, <laughs> just waiting for like your evil genius plan to take, <laughs> take form, but you have to wait for the CME to start it all. I know, and it's so... <sighs> okay, so, CME, what is it? It's a coronal mass ejection. Okay, that's... Basically, so you've got your solar flare, which is pretty, and it flies out, right? Yeah. But then, you know how, like, if you get this really deep belch that comes out sometimes, and you're like, because sometimes you're like, burp, and sometimes you're like, Bleh! And sometimes you actually throw up a little bit in your mouth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've had that. So the sun does that. Like exorcist. Yes. So <laughs> With the green pea soup and the flying around. So it's Reagan. She's possessed and... Yes. Okay, so the sun vomits up this horrible... Solar energy. Solar energy. Yeah, and it, it hammers... Instead of being diffused by our atmosphere like a solar flare would be, uh -huh. it can hammer straight through it. Okay, so our so our, our natural barrier is not strong enough to stop it in right. any way. It's not going to rip it off either, though, because of the way the particles come down. So it's not going to 
rip off all your atmosphere. It's not like, oh, we're all going to die. Okay, so, hypothetically, well, actually, you said that this has happened. It has happened. happened. Okay. It has. 1859. 1859. The Carrington event. Carrington event. The Carrington event. And I feel like the man with the notebook has looked it all up. <laughs> I think we're going to hire him on as our permanent research assistant. <laughs> I think he is our research man. Okay. Tell us, what do you know about the kid? Did you first? I did look up some things about the Carrington event. So in 1859, they had no explanation for what happened, but uh, telegraph operators all over the Northern Hemisphere uh, were reporting that their telegraph equipment started sparking and the communication lines of communication went down everywhere. But okay, hold on one second. For people who are young and don't watch westerns, what is a telegraph? <laughs> <laughs> the original form of communication, hardwired, where you go dee 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 dee. They use Morse code, right? Morse code. Morse code. And you are hardwired. To That's one another. Fantastic. If you've never heard of Morse code, you're going to have to look that up because we we ain't got time for it. No, no time. Okay. So, so they're all hardwired, but fortunately there's very few actual wires generally running along the ra the uh, railroad lines okay. and um, the railroad operators would communicate to each other and um, the major cities were kind of in contact with each other, but there were a few telegraph machines and the ones that were there said they're all had the same phenomenon that their uh, machine started sparking at the connections and then all the wires were, literally were fried and had to be replaced to get the telegraph system back working. Do we know if, like how widespread this was? It's the northern hemisphere. The, apparently the, the northern lights could be seen all the way to the southern states of the United States. Actually, okay. some reports wow. actually took them all the way to, to Cuba. Um, <clears throat> a couple people were, uh, there was a ship that I read about, they were down near the Falklands Islands. Or, okay. is it Falk Falklands? Yeah, Falklands and, and they saw it. it. And that's really south. Say Falklands? Yeah, Falklands. Falklands, Falklands, okay. Falklands. Hey, look. This is a look, man. show. This is a family show. Okay, so not okay. really. <laughs> not really. So okay, so a CME, and it's what again? Coronal mass ejection. Coronal mass ejection, and it was enough to take out all of the tap tap machines back in the old Which days. Which was the technology of the day. Right. Okay, so we're talking in 1859. So what kind of technology? Would that really actually affect today? Do we have shielding and no. things like that? No, 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 no. There's no shielding. No. no. All your satellites are going to be fried. Crispy critters. Okay, okay, okay. Once again, now, because this is what I'm. This is what I'm thinking. All right. So, <laughs> I mean, it did zap like basically all of North America. Yeah, it's like Marvin the Martian with his. What was that? It was the Eliminator ray. It was the Earth shattering kaboom. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but I know it was an Earth shattering kaboom. Okay, so... He's up there right now, but his big helmet. He's just hanging out by the sun, waiting for it to happen. Uh -huh. um, okay, so... <laughs> I guess the thing I'm... Okay, I'm having a hard time understanding, like... I mean, I understand in 1859 that we're going to have everything pride. I get that. But, like, you know, we ground everything now, and we have... I mean, and you're saying all the satellites, but satellites are in their orbits and they fly around. And stuff. Right, and so, so all this wave goes past and smacks them first. They they literally will the astronauts and people on the space station. Um, they're not protected enough for that it will cause bodily harm to them. Our atmosphere would keep it from causing bodily harm to us, like it wouldn't be a, a dinosaur killing event or or you know change the weather kind of event. But we would have so much hard uh, charged particles coming through the atmosphere that um, the the charged particles that are essentially your electric electric electricity right um, kind of is everywhere all the time, and so all the wires just kind of go. It just kind of because like basically over. Yeah. It's actually happened. It's, it's like turning um, on the power everywhere from all directions all the time at the same time at the same time. And then all the wires get red and hot and... Wait, 
No. We had one sometime in the 80s. I want to say it was 86. I'm not sure. Hit the earth. Took out, um, but it was very small. It was like one-tenth of the Carrington event. Okay. Took out a big section of Canada, New York, and part of Russia. Now, it, when you get, like, you look down those long power lines, the high-tension power lines. Right. And you get to the um, the substations between where right. they're... They, they help it travel. Well, they've got these great big, like, capacitors there. Mm -hmm. And they're special made. Okay. And they take, like, a year to make one. That's a lot. Yes. I mean, it's a long time. So to when this happened... They don't have the capacity for anyone. They don't. They don't have the capacity <laughs> for anyone. So when this happened, all these things were destroyed. Because ultimately, there's too much going through. It goes, crack, and then it's like, oh, well, we're screwed. So, okay. but the thing is that it can hit hard enough that it would be reminiscent of an, e, of an EMP. So it would hit hard enough to, I don't know that it would take out all the cars. Some cars with like a, a little bit less of a computer in them, mm -hmm. eh, they might live. Certain things that are sitting in like um, basements. Yeah. You know, like the underground parking, maybe. Okay. Older vehicles should be fine. What your your phone might be it, your phone might be okay, actually, but it's still just look for looking at pictures or playing the game you downloaded, and until it runs out of power, because <laughs> there's, there's, there's no power to recharge it. Right. right. So okay. All right. So and your cell phone towers are toast. All all those that, towers are toast. Yeah. Even the ones that look like trees. Even the ones that look like. Trees. All right. First of all, we need to switch back <clears throat> to something that was said. By Patrick over here earlier. We do need to speak up a little bit, guys. Okay. We're going to switch back over to what Patrick said a little bit earlier over here. So you said that if this happens and the astronauts that are in the space station and everything are up there, that it's enough to do bodily harm. Are we sure that it would do bodily harm, or is it going to give them superpowers? Um, superpowers. The superpowers are entirely possible. Oh my god, but, I'm so glad you said that. But, <laughs> but okay. they, they supposedly have... A, a place for just such an event on the space station for them to go and lock themselves into or something like that. They have a protected area for... No shit, that's awesome. So they, they know what's going to happen as well. They've planned it and built that in. Yeah, okay, so they know what's going to happen. They have it built in. The astronauts should be safe or they're going to get superpowers or they're going to die horrible deaths. So Super one bad. of those things is going to happen. <laughs> I really hope... I mean, we need a Fantastic Four, don't you think? I feel like the superpowers... I feel like this is my chance. Nope. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not happening. Now I get to pop your bubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Sorry, Bubble, bubble Pop yes. has been dethroned. Yes. All right, okay. All right, yeah, so... Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. No. So a CME... Has the potential? I mean, you everybody's we're, we're pretty much sure we're guaranteed it's going to happen at some point. At some point, we actually missed a direct hit in 2012. We know, uh, okay, that's pretty by two weeks. That's not far, that, yeah, that's not long. Right? <laughs> okay, so we know that's going to happen because Hayden said so, and also because the astronauts and NASA it, it, and, it has and all a lot to do with decided, what I said, yes. Because I said so, and I am well, mom. Yeah. The, those happen kind of on a gradient where, like, they can be really, really, really bad ones, or they can be relatively minor ones. That's what and I was so, going to ask. So they happen all the time. It's okay. just the vast majority of them are just like little burps, little flares, whatever. Yeah. But occasionally you get that. You um, get the exorcist vomit. You get the exorcist vomit coming right at the planet, and um, and then that's when it's, it's just a matter of time. It could happen any time. It's just a matter of time. And then the majority of your power grid goes down. And, right. and then you're left with, what do you do after that power grid is... Right. And, okay. that, and, and one thing that gets me about the power grid is, if it goes down here, then you've got trouble over here, and eventually you're going to have trouble over there. And it just kind of ripple effects. Yeah, it's right. So. so, okay. So we're saying that in the world of Break Channel 13, this is... A, Strong possibility. Definitely a strong possibility. Okay. So um, that it would cause that kind of long-term power outage. Oh, where, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're screwed six ways to Sunday, man. That if it's big enough, we're talking like years without power. 
at, at least, or maybe never coming back on again. We're or about we somebody, have to, somebody's got to figure that out later. Somebody, somebody's got to rebuild somehow, some way. Okay. All right. So what else we got? Well, one of the things I considered is if if we could think about this theoretically, and it's very theoretical that there's anyone smart in government. But theoretically, <laughs> there is a smart person in government yeah. that has considered this also. And if they already have the raw components to put together more uh, capacitors, more things like that, that they could assemble them um, and put them together and at least get key places up and running fairly quickly. Well, right. here's the thing. So back in 86, they actually did have some standing by. They were destroyed too because they draw electricity. Yeah, once but, so you'd yeah, have to hide them. Yeah, once they're once they're assembled, I think that they could, they, you know, they could then get burned up. But if you were to say oh, have build, build them, have them in pieces, ready to be assembled. Yeah, because the hard part is, is once the power goes down, you need a factory to then make the pieces to make more. The yeah, factory needs power. Yeah. <laughs> so, hmm. but also, oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all of our navy ships are supposed to be. Protected against this. Yeah, they should be, basically, and, and we, there's plane, planes that are. Yeah, there's certain airplanes. Certain, air certain planes the that bigger, are. bigger, better airplanes are supposed to be protected against that sort of thing so that as they're flying, if that happens, they don't just suddenly... Right, but not all of them. Okay. Right. And the Navy ships Things like Navy, should be. Navy ships and... Coast Guard should be. Theoretically, certain government facilities. You would think that it's... Yes. Think. Yes, and you would think that submarines. Yeah, I mean that would make sense, especially maybe. Right, and then well, you'd also wonder if they're if they're down, if they're I, and I don't know the answer to this. If they're down under the water, would it even affect them at all? Other than the fact that they've lost their GPS. So they're just gonna run into shit. No, because they've got no. the ra if, if the radar is still working, then that's in that's you know enclosed an enclosed system. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. So. Um, so, so, yeah, okay, so we know what that is now. Right. And we know that it could definitely have been what happened to turn off the power and shut down cars. My big thing, and I'm just, because I'm always thinking about Freight Channel 13, is that that always makes, it always makes me wonder, like, because again, people get so isolated, we're going to be so isolated, you know, there, there's definitely potential that there are government facilities and certain vehicles and certain people that are already protected from all of this. And so while we're out here scrounging for food and trying to make friends and trying not to get killed by bad guys, these people are like living it up, trying to decide what to do next. Mm. So I don't know that it'd be that easy. I mean, okay, so uh, you're thinking, well, okay, these politicians or whatever, they might try to bring back, I mean, because they have the continuance of government plan. Yeah. Only thing is, is when you have taken out all this communication, how are you communicating with your people what your intentions are? So Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I wonder... I they, mean, They might be in a facility, but it's not getting real good for them real fast either. Yeah. No trucks bringing them more. Yeah, I, I understand. So, I, I mean, it might be better for them, but how long does that last? Well, I mean, that's kind of the... That's the thing. It's like, and, and I think we might get into this a little bit more on Later. the next topic. Is just that. What is it? Mike Tyson said, "Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth." Yeah. And you know, it's like I feel like that there is a possibility that the government has been prepared, like that they knew something like this is going to happen. If they, they were truly prepared, if they were truly prepared, or they could protect our grid. They could. There are things that they could do. Right. But they don't. Do. But they won't do, and that's the thing. Like you have to think of it. This is going to well, get all money. political. It's money. Right. But at the same time, I mean, I mean, God, you've all seen the movies, you know, it's the end of the world, and here we've got, we're going to save the, the five scientists that know exactly how to fix everything, and the four doctors that are going to, you know, cure cancer, and the president, and his wife, and, you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean? So you've got the people, that, their contingency plan is to protect this many people. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's exactly what's happening, I mean, we're watching fictional movies. But let's just say that that is, because they know they can't protect everybody. So they're going to protect some people. So when they protect these some people and they think that they've got it all worked out because they've got a plan, well, once everything goes to shit, then it'll fall apart 
but then we'll be able to bring it back up because we have this much time. But what if that much time isn't enough? I mean, you're talking, if, if the CME can possibly be as bad as we are talking about, then it is possible that they're just not prepared for the long term, even if they had a plan to back up. You know what I mean? Uh, That's I, kind I, of where I I'm going at. Even, even if they have the best laid plans, it would take time. And does society break down in that time in the meanwhile? Right. right. Because yeah, and that's the thing. It's and, mice and men. And do you let you know, you're protecting your little corner here because you know you've got to use these people with these resources to restart things. So do you let everything else just go to hell? You know, you know that it's gonna collapse, you know people are gonna go they're gonna go primal. Do you let that happen or do you try to help and assist, but then that depletes your resources faster? So these are just the questions that go through my mind when I think about this kind of stuff. It's like, and, and, and I, don't want, I don't want to use the word expendable because I don't believe that people are expendable. Oh. I, I would rather not believe that people are expendable and that that wouldn't be part of a plan. Right. But at the end of the day, you got to, it's always that greater good thing. You know, do we let this many thousands of people die? Because we have to be able to save this many millions of people later, you know. Right. So we may not be expendable, but let's face it, not everybody's as valuable as everyone else. <laughs> yeah, but here's Correct. the thing. If you save five scientists that can save the world, they can't. Not without... Not without the workers to make it work. Right. I yeah. mean... You need, they need a people. farmer, they need a carpenter, they need right. a welder. Yeah. I mean, you, you can have five chiefs, but if you don't have any engines, yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, so it's a very we, real thing. A CME yes. is going to happen. It's a CME when we don't know. That's up, but it is going to happen. That's up to nature. Yeah, and we um, can't stop it. But up to mankind is an EMP. Yep. Or and the virus. That a computer virus. A computer virus. Computer virus. Now I don't know how feasible this is, it, it, but right. but. It, it could happen, in reg- but the only way that, after doing a bit more research, the only real way that they'd be able to get into multiple places is, A, to attack multiple places, but to get into all the service providers. Meaning, okay. if they went into, you know, Cox, and they went into Verizon, and they went into... Right, because they, the, they all have their own firewalls and Right, and if, if they could get through all that and send it into your Wi-Fi, they could send it into government Wi-Fis, too. Yeah. I mean, they have to be slick as whale shit, but... <laughs> I'm sure the government has a lot more fail-safes than they do. any of they the do. Well, that's not true, because Russia hacked the election. Just Whatever. Like, yeah. Okay, let's not go there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, nobody would have their own server in their bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't happen okay, so, at the highest government so, levels. So, well. but, but we're going to say that while it is kind <laughs> of... Well, it's kind of plausible... Maybe not really feasible to take out. It could not. How's it going to take out everybody's car? Right. So, so you know. Eh. I think for me, the computer viruses is along that spectrum. If you could affect enough people for long enough, that uh, again, the so the, the, the gas, societal breakdown. Yeah, society breaks down. The gas stations aren't pumping. Yeah. Things happen. There's enough panic going on. And if you can start stirring up a panic in a city, it's it's like spreads like wildfire. I mean, fire. you don't even have to knock out electricity to do that. Just knock out the internet, right? Knock out the internet alone. Okay, so I'm on that make note, everything go crazy. We move on to the next part of this discussion, <clears throat> which is what's your first heads up? Oh, okay. So the shit has hit the fan. Meaning there maybe there was a bright shiny thing. Maybe it happened at four a.m. And you were asleep, or you weren't, but but inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with this cardiology analyzer machine that keeps going right. down? So. Hey, why isn't anybody watching our podcast? Okay, is that is that what it is? Nobody's nobody on here on here. Uh, that's funny because nobody is. <laughs> I am. I'm loving. We still have a live audience. Yes, we have a live audience. That's right. <coughs> okay. Okay. The first. What is your first clue? Heads up that this is something that's bigger than just a power outage. 
what's my first heads up that this is more than just a power outage? Right. I mean, um, because, because we've seen the internet go down. Phone mm-hmm. service providers can suck. Don't. <laughs> nah, I mean, if I, if I roll up to Mary Washington <laughs> Hospital and their internet's down. <laughs> that's, that's common. That's common, yeah. Starbucks, uh, I, all the places that have internet like all the time. Um, okay, but let's say you're let's say you're at home in your home in the woods. Okay. Yeah. And I would think it's a typical day. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because the internet's gone down. Right. Surprise. Power's out, but that can happen. Then I'd like to see who all was home. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Anyway, go on, go on. <laughs> so we're going to say it happened at 4 a.m. Okay, everybody's sleeping. Everybody's sleeping. It went down. It went down. It's a clear mm-hmm. night. Right, but because your phone, let's say your computer was not plugged in. Because if okay. your computer was plugged in, it's not turning on again. Okay. Right, but we'll say your phone was not charging. So you get everything that's on there, but you have no service. I mean, a guy like you, it's not going to take long, I don't think. Well, I mean, because of where I'm at, it would take me longer to realize how big it was. Right. Yeah, you're out in the woods. You're yeah, not, because of where I mean, we are and how hit and miss the internet is anyway. Yeah. It would take more time. You go out to start your car, you then start. You're like, what the fuck? That would be like, oh, what the hell? I just replaced the damn starter. It spent a lot of time doing yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah. And you see, but you see where your mind went. It didn't went. It didn't go with powers out, my internet's out, and now my freaking car won't start. So you still haven't connected the dots to go. What the hell? Yeah. Well, I mean, and the power is yeah, the power is completely out and it's not coming back on. Um, but I mean, that can happen. Yeah, you can on. you can have a power outage for a few hours. Whereas if you live in New York City. And all of a sudden, all the horns start stop beeping. All the traffic <laughs> light stops. Yeah, entire Every, city blocks go dark. Yeah, dark. yeah, all the lights go dark. They've had rolling blackouts, and it's like you know panic ensues. But those but, cars but the don't cars stop. are still working, and there's still right. some signs of yeah. electricity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But when things go really, really dark, I mean, besides the fact that nine months later there's a baby boom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there is things that. Things go really, really dark. <laughs> And, and that's going to be part of the next part of this question. <laughs> so, well, basically, then, <laughs> the more populated the area is, the faster people are going to realize it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, if you're even living in the neighborhood, you know, and everybody gets up and goes out to start their car I mean, in the morning, if and nobody's an able to start their car, Something's we're all like, what the hell's going on, you know? Yeah. If it's an EMP, yeah. these probably won't even turn on whether they were plugged in or not. They're probably all right. fried. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everything's fried if it's EMP. Right. So, I think with an EMP, you Pretty quick. Even if you were asleep, you didn't see it. Yeah. You were far enough away to, you know, not see it. Of course, you didn't get the news because nobody's calling anybody. Right. 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 Yeah. So. So with an EMP, there's no signs of electricity anywhere. Right. With a CME, there could be signs of electricity, but right. um, it would be things like your phone would turn on; it just never, wouldn't necessarily work. Exactly. Yeah. Which would prolong thinking. Well, everything's okay. Or you'd, have boom, linger, right. you'd have lingering yeah. power that would right. kind of. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yes, you'd have some things that would work. I mean, we we'll talk about the things that would work in a different episode, but. And then in a computer virus, what you would just have like your phone would work, yours may not. That might work, but this may not. So it'll be even more confusing. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't but, know. But certain things would work and appear to be normal. Other things would be different. And I, I think that if it was a computer virus, I do think that the government would be capable of getting the word out. Yeah. To yeah. say, uh, some, some shit hit the fan. Oh, and everyone's staying there. Everybody's not a good point about the, the, how some would work, some wouldn't work because... I remember when the high winds were happening for a while, we had really high winds. I was driving a cab and up in Stafford, the sprint towers like went down. (laughs) There was nothing. (laughs) And sprint was the only one that had to deal with that. And I mean, there was absolutely (laughs) nothing. Just having a good time. And not only sprint, it was because of the piggybacking, there was sprint, T bubble, boost, all of them were gone. But ATT worked just fine. Verizon worked just fine. Just saying. Um, yeah. So Supposedly on 9-11, I'm not exactly sure why, but 9-11, Blackberries worked. 
that the other phones didn't <laughs> in New York. Hmm. I don't know if that's a volume Has issue. Be, yeah, I would think it's a volume issue. <coughs> that's, that's what I understood. I was in Quantico when that happened, and all the cell phones, even on Quantico, were like, they were working, oh my God. but they were busy. They were, you right. couldn't get right. through to anybody because the cells were all busy. What's this? What's this? Oh my God, they're smashed in there. Why are you smashed? It's not my fault. Um, I'll eat them in pieces. I don't care. Even when we had that minor earthquake a few years ago, what was that, 2014? 15? 11? Yeah, more like 11. 11? Yeah, 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 it was, it was a while back. Okay, well, I remember we were at work and, you know, we had the earthquake and it was a, it was a mess. And it was quick. People were quick to panic because nobody could call anybody. And it wasn't because any electrical thing happened. It was just the fact that everybody was trying to check on everybody. So right. the lines were, all the lines were overloaded. And, but just standing outside with the people that were in the building, and for some reason we all went outside, which was not what we were supposed to do. But everybody's outside. They're all trying to make phone calls. Nobody can make phone calls. And the panic on people's faces was just like, it was insane. You know, I mean, it was it's amazing how quick people start to panic when they... That's what you were supposed to do in an earthquake, is go outside. Not when you're inside of a glass building. Mm. Oh, yeah. When you go outside and the glass mm. starts shattering, it rains down on top of you and kills you. Inside. So why wouldn't you no, go outside? No, outside. Inside, you can go to the middle of the building, and you can be supported by beams and rafters. Raptor, and then later, and people who do what I used to do can come and find you in the rubble. And that... If you're, but if you're outside and all the windows start to break on the outside, it just rains down glass on people, and then you end up cut up and dead. Okay. Look, because if you go and it's just like a hurricane or a tornado, you, you go to a plane, you go to a small room where well, I can see that there's yeah. wind involved, but in an earthquake it would just no, because the beams and everything that are there they help to support the rest of the weight of the building. Okay, we're not here to fight about earthquake reactions. Anywho. Okay, fine. So, <laughs> it's a glass building. Stay inside, Mike. Um, he wants you to die, man. I don't want you to die. <laughs> and I don't want you to be all cut up and gross. Um, so... Okay, so, but we have already kind of got into the, the next part of the question, which is the psychological impact. What's the reaction? That's right off the bat. So, well, you're already saying it's panic. Yeah. I mean, people... If it, if it's... If like, again, if you're at a place where there's a lot of people... If when when the normal things stop happening, panic. Right. And it, it may not be, you know, everybody freaks out and starts, you know, killing each other or anything, but it's it's definitely a panic. Actually, I think the first thing that happens is people sort of come together. They're like, Is your phone working? Is your phone working? You know, whatever the thing is, like they kind of come together trying to figure out what's going on. But it's that there it, there, there is low level panic all the time. You know, all we had to hear was the hurricane's coming and then all the milk disappears. You know, it's the same thing. Right, right. Milk bread. No. <laughs> no. Right. You can't, can't live get anxiety that. when the internet goes out of my house. That's see. you. I mean. That's you. Yeah. But, I mean, well, I have okay, a 13-year-old so, so, son. So, and our, our internet went out for one whole 14-hour period and you would have thought the world was over. I mean, <laughs> literally, it was the worst thing that ever happened to him. It's a long time. See, look at him. He is... He, he's, he's, he's my 13-year-old son right now. Right. He is over there, like, totally sympathizing with this kid. Yeah. That's a long time. I mean, it does for... Okay, it, so, it changes everything. So let's look at it from that perspective. So, generally, we're expecting panic. Right. What's your first response? What? To not having the internet or power or anything Everything's like off. that? Everything that I have now, is now electronic. I, I guess Everything part I of it... Internet. Part of it depends on where you're at, I think. No. No, not really, because, I mean, everything that, even if I'm out and about, I'm on my phone somehow. I mean, not while I'm driving. Right. But <laughs> if I'm out and about, I'm on my phone. Right. I take pictures. I talk on Facebook. Right? So, yeah, so if the Internet goes down and the power is out, I'm pretty bored. And bored leads to anxiety, and anxiety leads to possible murder. It depends. I don't know. That's me. I'm bored. This Who do we kill? The dark side. Mm. I, I would freak out. I, if, you know, for a while. For a while. I would, I would eventually, because I went without internet at one time, I could go back to right. that. Right, right. We're but, all of the age of yeah. before these. Yeah. But can you imagine what, I mean, teenagers would be like? 20-something-year-olds would just yeah, be Yeah, they'd lose their freaking yeah. mind. 
They don't have to do anything. They can't even write a check. I would lose my mind so, for a little while. No doubt. You can't use your money. Your data card yeah. is useless. Well, and here, this is another thing, and I'm just going to bring it up real quick. We can stay on it if you want, but I'm just saying, what the fuck is up with all the digital content? How come I can't go and buy a CD anymore? You can. And once it hits the $5 bin of Walmart. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about this the other day at work, and everything is going to digital, and everybody thinks, oh, this is great because you're using less resources, blah, blah, blah. Well, for one thing, it still costs the same as when you buy the actual disc, and I think that's shitty. And secondly, yeah. if the internet goes down, everything that you bought is gone. It's gone. Gone. Well, it doesn't matter if it's on a disc. That's an EMP or CMP. Yeah, DVD won't work. <laughs> <laughs> TV won't work to watch it. You have I'm to have. Saying. You have to have the music in your head. Oh God! See, and that's the other messed up thing. I got an old LP, and I can spin the record. You just sit there, and I can sit. Well, well, and you well, listen real close. The needle will make noise. <laughs> we'll make pedal pedal machines. So, I mean, <laughs> we like Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Okay, yeah. let's say, let's say yeah. the internet goes down, and you have like four or five teenagers sitting around. They're not going to know what to do with themselves because my, me personally. Okay, you said that about the earthquake. What's the first thing I did? I Googled it. You Googled it. You were right, <laughs> but I Googled it. I was, was able I really to right? get online and find the answer. I love it how you weren't going to tell me that I was right. <laughs> I, I didn't. I just did. No, you weren't going to, though. Ow. Ow. We've, we've had a, a couple interesting ah, I cast your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. But, I mean, yeah, my first go-to is to get on the computer or my phone and ask the question. Right. What's we, going on? How, what is this happening? We've know? had a couple interesting events in history that can give you an idea of what would happen. Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Sandy. There is a natural event that we knew was coming, and when it hit New Orleans, all form of communication went down, all form of law enforcement went out the window. There right. were even videos of police officers loading crap up from Walmart into their yeah, cruiser. Isn't that amazing? Like, like they that. went to the dark side in a hurry. So they're going to help you. And that's, you know, ridiculous. So what you're saying is next time there's a hurricane on the coast, join the police force. There you go. <laughs> they got the Who's going to stop you, right? Um, but also Hurricane Sandy. What was not in a lot of the newspapers and media at the time was gangs are already organized and they're already in gangs. What they do is they generally don't, like, um, chat with each other online they usually hang out and they're like hey dude let's go to that house and take what we want yeah. and that's what they start doing is they just start going door to door and taking what they want and you can't call for help you can't do anything about it and they just kind of go where they want and do what they want and I think that's where you start to quickly see a panic yeah. um, kind of going out but it doesn't happen kind of getting back to your comment of, of where you are that didn't happen in when the hurricanes hit in other places. Um, and so when a hurricane has come across North Carolina and other places, you didn't see, you know, all the vacationers turning on each other as they go across the, yeah. the, the uh, <laughs> Bay Bridge or whatever. You know, like, it, it kind of depends. And so the natural disasters, EMPs, whatever, when the power goes out and lawlessness breaks out, it depends a lot of where you are as to what you're going to do about it and how fast you hear about it. Um, so it's like a situational awareness. Right, which is important. Yeah, that would be a great kind of thing to look, I mean, to look into what's well, culture, but like what is the sense of community that people have? You know, some areas Diminished? are... Well, some people are very close. I mean... In the LA riots yeah. after the earthquake. Yeah, I mean, in some areas... You, you basically can expect that shit's going to go bad. I mean, because of the, and it's, you know, the culture of the area. I mean, right. it, city life is completely different than country life. And I don't know, though, because in the city, you'll still have those little neighborhoods mm -hmm. that are like, let's all band together in the building or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And in the country, yeah, a lot of people take care of their neighbors. But at the same time, a lot of people, you come over here, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, that's true, too. So, I mean... That's why it's good to know your neighbors. Yeah. Right. I got great, I got great neighbors. I think we would all band together. I got, I, mean, I, got like, one, I got one that's good. Like four of our houses. The rest of them would be okay. Shit. 
Just kidding. <laughs> You're taking the drill press. That drill press is mine. I should have never left it. Should have never left it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So. So, what's your initial reaction? Are you like, okay, I'm panicking, or well, it, what's your first thought? Is it I got to get home? Is it where am I? What what is it? If I'm at work. Um, and the, the grid completely goes down and the building goes dark. Right. Um, well, you we, have backup we have generators. Backup generators. Right. So if our backup generators and our machines that have battery packs in them, if they all quit, um, then I, I quickly realize this is an electrical yeah. event that right. of, of, magnitude. Of, of serious magnitude. Um, but then it becomes kind of a thing of do you abandon ship? Because you know, if you work someplace like police, law enforcement, fire and rescue, right? Yeah. I, at what point are you honor bound here or versus honor bound to your family? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Right. Um, our studio audience is saying I should go home as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, but I, I think that uh, you know that's that, that, that's you know She's our studio audience. That, that's that's kind of a tough call. You know, when do you start to say? Uh, yeah. So I guess for get, you. It, it would kind of almost depend on what's it in, what are you facing, what do you have on your hands right there in front of you at the moment. Yeah, if I'm, if I think this is just a computer virus and we have some things working, you might stay work, you know, try to find out what's going on because we have the uh, emergency rooms have radio uh, right. com communication systems that are supposed to be part of a DC right. metro communication. Yeah. Um, but if if even that is is going down. Right. I think that's when you, I think reasonably should say it's time to turn the lights off. Sure, but what I think what I'm saying home. is because, you know, when you work in emergency services of any sort, if you've got your hands full at the moment, so it would almost depend on what's sitting in front of you in regards of, you know, are you looking at an injured child that came in before right. all this happened? You know, right. you right. may stay for that. There are some people in the hospital who are going to sit there bagging a patient. Because there's no electricity, right? And there, the ventilator yeah. stopped working. Yep. At some point, you have to stop. You can't be there forever. Have to stop, right? Right. Yeah. That's that's a tough one. <clears throat> that so that's that's a tough one, and I think that could cause like a instant of kind of a form of PTSD, where you're just like, yeah, I, I have to make this decision. Yeah. You know. And how about you? Well, For, first thought. Let's let's say you're at let's say you're all the way out in Westmoreland <laughs> because you got stuff doing that, which does happen, folks. Right. Um, so you're all the way out there. <laughs> the car dies. Now you can't get in touch with ever anybody. What are your first thoughts? What it you know? You, all the street lights are out. Well, I think initially. I mean, you're not alone out there. I mean, you're in Westmoreland, so it's kind of alone. But um, there will be <laughs> there will be other people experiencing the same thing. Okay. And yeah, um, you know, it's it's a tough. I think it's a tough thing to really call. I think, How long does it take you before you start walking? If I see that nobody is going anywhere, I'm you, starting to walk. You, you are sitting there going, click, click, click. You got nothing. Yep. I'm going to look for the next. I'm going to look for. A, I'm going to look for a way to get home. That's the way. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, if I if I know the car is not going to start, nobody else's car is going to start. There's no phone. There's no nothing. Then I'm starting to walk immediately because. Um, now, are you going back to work? Or are you going to, well, I guess you would because your vehicle would be there and you'd want to try it. Yeah, I definitely want to try my own stuff. Plus, I mean, you need to get back to work because it, it's familiar, for one thing. Um, and in my case, it's closer right. than going all the way home. Um, you know, and I don't have a lot of things at work, but I do have some things at work that I would want to sure. grab and have with me so that for my trek home, you know. I mean, you already walked. Oh, 20 miles, 30 yeah, miles. Yeah. So, um, actually I may even go there just to rest because it's, it's a place that I know is, I know, and I right. know that I know what to expect there. Um, so I think well, I would go there and maybe, maybe rest. Maybe. 
So it just dawned on me that all these door locks. They stopped working. I was thinking the same thing. They stopped working. Yeah. So it's easy to invade that building at that yeah. point unless somebody has flipped. Well, is it somebody easy has... to invade or is it harder to get in? No, they're, they're. Well, they're locked though. When the power goes off, they're locked. Like our back oh, okay. door. Okay. So you know, the back door, the back entrance. So you got a bash window. It's gone. Right. Well, the only thing about it. Work. Well, Better I don't power. know though because to be honest, those are electronic magnets. I uh, see. That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought they were magnetic, it's and a that, magnetic that being the case, they're not. So the power goes out. The magnet will only have you know minimal strength of if any. Like a refrigerator magnet. Right. So. So I wouldn't stay there long. That was all the well, you could already it. hanging out down there. You could barricade it. Yeah. I mean, you could. All right. If you're at work and you're thinking of coming my direction, just stop off at the client's ice cream place and get me some. Because you're getting <laughs> <my ice. laughs> He's like, just, just, just grab me a bucket of something on the way. It doesn't matter just, what it is. Just hook a brother up. Man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good call. Now, me. Won't last long. It'll be <laughs> melting by the time I get to you. So I'm the psycho of the group. Because you would start killing people immediately? I'm the one that always... <laughs> I just don't understand why he would do that. What? I, I'm not doing that. Oh, okay. She would just stop hiding the bodies. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the one that basically always has a bag with her. Okay, but well, hold on a second. Before we go any further, I just want to say this one thing. When it comes to people... It's hard to trust people. True. In any situation. And that's, that's, just, that's just me. Okay. No, I agree. You know, nobody be offended. But, um, so I think that when I, when I think I think that's why I start walking. Like a lot of people would yeah. panic and they freak out and they want to get together and like, can we? What can we do? And at first, I would I would probably say, so how's everybody doing? Everybody okay? Everybody know what's going on? And then, while they're trying to figure out what to do next, that's when I start walking. And they're gonna be like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, ah, "I'm going home," <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, which is, I don't know. Some people might find that off-putting, but that's just the way I am. No. See, if I was at work, then I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna have one question. I'm gonna be like, "Okay," to my cohort in crime. Well, one of them has no choice. I'm just gonna be like, "Dude, we got to go." The other one, my cohort in crime, I'm gonna say, "Where is your husband?" <laughs> and the reason being is because I need to know which way I'm going. Yeah. Am I taking her home or am I taking her to him? You know, and that's a decision. But I know I'm, I'm walking and I know I have the things to make it and I know I can defend myself, you know, and the people who are with me. Mm -hmm. So that makes me the psycho because I'm the one that'd be going, wait, it's dead, Jim. <laughs> and I'm like, it's so funny because <laughs> you can't take when you, uh, <laughs> you root your phone and you hack Androids a lot, when it stops working completely and it's completely useless, they call it a brick. Yeah. yeah, you bricked your phone. Yeah, yeah. It'd pretty much be bricks. Yeah, be bricks. Like, nice paperweight. Yeah, there's black phones, so you can build a house. So uh, one thing, if you you know, where we have an advantage over millennials is in your travels, you're walking home, look for a 1980s car with, sure. a, clutch, with yeah. a clutch. Yeah. yeah. Um, Roll because, start that beast. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you can clutch start it, and now you have moving transportation, which puts you miles and miles right. technologically you to, above yeah. everybody else. You just going to have to break the ignition, which means you just need a screwdriver. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, they're easy to uh -huh. hot wire and clutch start, and, yep. and then you're on your way. Yeah. Which millennials, you know, <laughs> What's a stick? <laughs> right. Actually, even if they know how to drive it, they probably don't know how to pop clutch. Yeah. <laughs> right. they, they don't know that you can do that. Yeah. They, right. they, they so why the hell did we just tell them? They still don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> What's a clutch? <laughs> What's a clutch? <laughs> pop? What? Pop start. What? Hmm? Yeah, that's funny. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna be looking for that seventy-something Chevelle. Well, yeah. I'm gonna. Be, you'll see my little feet sticking out. As I'm hot watering that beast. Blah, 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 blah. We could drive. My, we, could, we could drive my son's go kart. What about those kind of vehicles? Most of them don't have any computers or electricity. Yeah, go karts yeah. and things like that would work. Yeah. God, Mike is gonna be on my damn mower. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> Where'd Mikey go? Just follow the cut grass. <laughs> I'm gonna be like Forrest Gump on my lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. What are these guys do? They're having mower races. Really, really. Well, a bunch of. Well, I mean that makes sense. I'm only sense driving the mower to the nearest golf cart. <laughs> I mean, I'm just driving. Even yeah. even in the show. Um. You know, they're driving bikes, and a lot of, a lot of motorcycles don't lot have of the same right. electronics that Those cars old, have. The older ones don't. Right. None of them do. So, right. Well, some of the newer ones. The, the newer ones do, but right. not the older ones. The older ones don't. Anything. I mean, they, they took a long time to catch up with the electronics compared to passenger vehicles and yeah. things like that. absolutely. So. So, hopefully people will comment on this as they see it. Um, kind of want to know your questions, your thoughts, what would you do? This is also going to be a uh, podcast. It will be turned into a podcast by tonight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep, I already got it figured out. And it'll be YouTube. YouTube it. So. Yeah, YouTube. Um, this is an every two week gathering. Every two weeks. So it's every not coming, two weeks. Right. So it's okay. not coming out again next week, but the week after. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Wait, 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 wait. I just wanted to say that the season finale of Break Channel 13 is coming out tonight. So check that out. The uh, episode is called You Don't Know Jack, which you really don't. I, I think she's a little psycho. Um, <laughs> also, like and subscribe on your favorite uh, your favorite app for podcasting. You can check out WatershedZProductions.com. Oh, and hey. Also, and the t-shirt. Check out this shirt. Can you see it? Yep. Can you see There's it? no power anywhere. No, no power, power anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. it's backwards on the camera, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, no power anywhere. You can uh, get that T-shirt by letting us know that you want one. And we'll set up the link. We'll put it on Facebook. Okay, and uh, it's it's useful in more than one way. It's not just about Break Channel 13 because these days there's really no power anywhere, <laughs> politically or anything. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry a little bit, man. Don't cry. <laughs> Don't cry. And and that's the artist, and that's why he wants to cry. So it's all good. So, <laughs> but well, the funny thing is, is this is our first time officially doing this, but we have these kind of conversations all the time. So, um, you know, who you never know what's going to come up next. Next week so. or two weeks, you guys will probably be able to hear us better, um, and the camera work might be a little bit better. So, yeah, we're just trying to get used to all this stuff, you know. So. We're not, we were just talking about how millennials can't drive a stick. Well, we can't figure out how to do this We need to find a millennial. <laughs> no. No. Don't feel entitled. Oh. Mikey has done an excellent job. He's done a good job of, of figuring out how to make all this work. And everybody, I appreciate it. So, yeah, thanks for uh, joining us. Hopefully, you guys get the opportunity to comment. Uh, anything you do comment will probably come back later. I know a lot of people couldn't come in today because of what time it is and whatever. Yeah. But yeah, Gabe. Yeah. I mean, JD. Hey, but Robin's watching. Right. So, anyway, again, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And thanks for joining us. Later. Sounds awesome. Very good. It's going to listen several times in a.